This is the Scoop for Wednesday. And I'm Megan Bowman with the WMNF News Headlines. A recent poll found many Americans strongly disagree with the pro-Palestine encampments and protests happening on campuses nationwide. The Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression, or FIRE, released its findings last week. Chief Research Advisor Sean Stevens says the poll found a large majority of people want to see some form of punishment handed out to encampment participants. But he says the results were not all that surprising. Conservative Americans are far more likely than liberal slash progressive Americans to endorse punishment. Moderate Americans look more like conservative Americans, but they're not as you know gung ho about it. Stephen says many people view the Israel-Palestine conflict as a moral issue, and nearly two thirds of the respondents say the protests have had no impact on their sympathies for the Palestinians. Stephen says since the October seventh Hamas attacks, there's a broad pattern of people digging further into their beliefs. People whose sympathies were with Israel, like before the attack, have have kind of hardened in that stance and and people whose sympathies are with the Palestinians have have effectively done the same thing. Around 1,300 people were asked 10 questions about campus protesters' methods. Another poll geared more toward college students asking similar questions will be released by early September. The UCF Board of Trustees approved a campus-wide ban on camping, along with limits to where and when protests can take place at their meeting on Tuesday. The action comes after pro-Palestinian protests on campus this spring. Terry Falbo was at the meeting. She's a member of the public who wants to support students speaking out against the ban. I have a feeling that it's totally being done for political reasons to suppress a political viewpoint from being out there. Florida State University banned camping on its campus last week. One of Tampa's historic and underserved communities is set to undergo a major transformation over the next few years. WMNF's Chris Young reports a new multi-million dollar project will help revamp the Palmetto Beach area. The nearly $25 million federal grant will come from President Joe Biden's bipartisan infrastructure plan. It will help fund major stormwater and mobility improvements in the Palmetto Beach area. Tampa Mayor Jane Castor says it's the third time they've gone after this grant. It is an area that over the years has gradually declined and due to the deteriorating infrastructure has become disconnected from important transportation networks in our city. It's called Pathways to Palmetto. The project will focus on Bermuda Boulevard, a two-lane roadway that hugs McKay Bay. Tampa officials say they will improve current issues like the street's unmarked parking, narrow sidewalks, and slim buffer between it and the shore. The city is providing a match of around $6 million and expects the project to take up to five years to complete. Chris Young, WMNF News, Tampa. Hillsborough County Public Schools could have a new policy on mobile phones and other electronic devices before the beginning of the new school year in August. On WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, school board member Jessica Vaughn previewed what the new policy might look like. So the, the most recent version of the policy, which if people want to take a look at it before we vote on it in July, um, we have all our agendas online and it was included in the last agenda. So people can actually go on board docs from our website and look it up. But essentially it says that for every time that a student's in school, that the device, whatever device they have, that means smartwatches, cell phones, if there's any other kind of electronic device, needs to be um, put on silent and put away in their backpacks throughout the day. Now, there are exceptions for that. If a teacher gives you um, authorization to use it for instructional time or the assignment, or I know that there are some schools where you can earn mobile device time as kind of part of their um, positive behavior reinforcement plan. Um, So you can use it in those situations. Or if there's a medical emergency if you know it it monitors your blood sugar and it alerts your family or something like that or if it's even built into your IEP or your 504 then you can make an allowance for the electronic device and that's Hillsborough School Board member Jessica Vaughn speaking on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. You can watch the full interview at our website, WMNF.org. And the school board is expected to discuss and vote on a new policy on electronic devices July 23rd. Now, I'm Megan Bowman with the WMNF News Headlines. This is The Scoop. 
recorded at WMNF Tampa.